Church, welcome this morning. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Brad, and I've got the privilege of serving as the, the lead pastor here, so I want to welcome you to church with us this morning. It's a wonderful thing. It's getting harder and harder to get up on the stage here um, because of all the people that are up here, and so we're so grateful for our, our growing and expanding worship team, but want to invite you that if you'd like to be a part of our growing and expanding worship team, there's always room for one more, and so if you'd like to be a part of that, you're welcome to just speak to Pastor Matt or myself and let us know. But we're going to begin our service this morning with the reading of scripture together. We're going to continue reading from 1 John, where John writes kind of a little poem here. And so we're going to get to, to work through this together, where it will say, I am writing to you who are God's children, because your sins have been forgiven through Jesus. Well, I am writing to you who are mature in the faith, because you know Christ 
who existed from the beginning. I am writing to you who are young in the faith because you've won your battle with the evil one. I have written to you who are God's children because you know the Father. I have written to you who are mature in the faith because you know Christ who existed from the beginning. I have written to you who are young in the faith because you are strong. God's word lives in your hearts and you have won your battle with the evil one. Let's pray together. Father God, I thank you that even as we've read your word this morning, that no matter who we are and no matter matter how far along we are in our life's journey, no matter how far we are or along we are in our relationship with you, God, I thank you that the promise remains the same that we have won our battle, that, that we are victorious in Christ, that through you we are more than conquerors. And so, God, I pray that as we've gathered together today in, in, in unity and together in this place, God, would you fill us with a spirit of hope this morning? God, would you fill us with a spirit of boldness and of confidence that comes from being children of God? And God, I pray that as we've gathered together for this time this morning, in this place and in this way, God, I pray that you would just come and move in our midst today, that you would come and show us how victorious we are, that you would show us the victory that we have in you, that you would show us the places where, where maybe we're fear and anxiety or, or worry or, or stress or defeat have, have captured our hearts, and that you would show us the victory that we have in you today. God, I I am so grateful that we don't have to to live in wonder and we don't have to live in in what ifs, but we get to live knowing that through Christ we have a sure and living hope. And so God, I pray that for each one gathered here that may struggle with the idea of hope, for each one gathered here that may struggle with the idea of where they find themselves in life today. God, may the promise remain the same, whether we're children in Christ, whether we're mature in Christ, that we have won our battle. And so, God, as we worship, may we worship with a spirit of of just passion and excitement and joy and fullness, God, because of what you've done for us, the victory we have in the cross. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. And so we're going to continue to worship this morning. Today's Pentecost Sunday, and we're going to be talking about more about that in a minute and all those things. But if you'd like to stand with us and worship, you're welcome to do that. If if not, if sitting or another posture is more comfortable for you, you're welcome to do that as well. But uh, I was going to say Zook, Zach, and Luke, but it's Zach. It's just Zach. Luke's not even here. It's Zach (laughs) is going to continue to lead. I am doing that all day today. So if when you came in, I called you the wrong name and I didn't even realize it, I'm sorry. But welcome to church. We're going to continue to worship. If you'd like to stand, Zach and the team are going to continue to lead us and we'll be back with more in in a little while. In, uh, in just picking the songs and stuff for this week, I just um, I wanted to put it like an emphasis on um, just a thankful heart and a heart that wants to worship and that wants to praise and that, you know, thankful that uh, for the good times when we have them, thankful that even in the bad times we have Jesus with us. Um, and yeah, just that in all things we can always worship and praise him. We can always find a reason. Oh, 
starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus
Every soul held captive by depression I speak to Jesus Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus on my family, I'll speak the holy name of Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Over every enemy, and Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Jesus, your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break Shine through the shadows, but like a fire. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every soul, shine through the shadows. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you that we could, uh, we could all be here, that we can worship and praise you and just lift your name up here together. I just pray that we can continue to do that, that we can and just have fellowship and, 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 and just grace and, and understanding and love for each other and for you. Just thank you, God. Praise you, Lord. Make 
God's favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening and you're coming and you're going and you're weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 he is for you
Lord, just quiet our souls right now. Let us just put away any of the, the things we're holding on to, the things that we, we might be taking with us that we're just holding on to so tightly. Just let us, let us lay them to rest at your feet. Let us just hold, let you hold us close. You'll never let us go. This morning, and this is mostly just for Carmen, um, the next little section with announcements, I'm going to do it all out of order. Um, so if you can go down to the Pentecost slide next. Um, on Easter, uh, we talk about on Easter how that's the day that, that changes everything. That, that Easter changes, changes the whole story. Jesus is, is raised from the dead, and that changed everything. And today is another day just like that. Today is the day where, where we reflect and remember on the coming of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the day that the church was born and, and the Holy Spirit came upon the followers of Jesus. Jesus had, had told his followers to remain in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit would come upon them. And, and then there they would be given power and from there they would be his witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and to the ends of the world. And today is the day where we, we as, as an entire church community all over the world pause to, to remember and reflect on that. Today is the day where, where we remember that all of this started somewhere. That, that our gathering together today is, is a direct result of what happened on Pentecost Sunday. And a lot of times when people will gather together for Pentecost Sunday, what they'll pray for is they'll pray for a, a fresh move of the Holy Spirit. They'll say, God, we want a fresh move of the Holy Spirit. Um, but today, that's not what I want to pray for for us this morning. Um, because I don't believe that we need something new from God. I, I don't believe that, that we've used up everything God has given us, and, and now we need something new because we're running low on what he's already given us. But instead, what I think we need is a newness inside of us. That I don't need something new from the Holy Spirit I need me to respond in a new way to the Holy Spirit. I need to be opened up in a new way to the Holy Spirit working in me. We, we don't need something new of God. We need to be renewed. We need to see our hearts and our lives opened up in a new way. Maybe they need to be opened in a way. Maybe it's a way that was closed off and it needs to be reopened. But it's not God we need something new from. It, it's us being open to God in a new way. And when we're open to God in a new way, we will see God working in our lives in a way that can change everything. And so in light of it being Pentecost Sunday, I was going to release the kids before we prayed, but I thought, no, I want them to be a part of that. That's why I said to Carmen, this is all out of order. But 
I thought it appropriate to pray with our kids here because we want the Holy Spirit at work in the lives of the littlest ones all the way to the oldest ones. And so what I'm going to do, and, and this is going to take a step of great faith in you, um, because this is going to, to, to require us to do something, but I think it's appropriate that when we're saying, God, I want you to come and new, do something new in me, that we respond to it in a way. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pray in a moment that, that our lives would be opened to God in a new way. And that with this being Pentecost Sunday, you know, the scripture will say that, that the believers were gathered together in the upper room in one heart and in one place. And friends, if we can be gathered together in one place and in one heart, the Holy Spirit began to blow through them. And I believe the Holy Spirit will come and work in us today. But I want to invite you to respond to that. And so I'm going to ask you to do something quite significant depending on your nature. But if that's you this morning and you'd like to say, God, I want you to do something new in me. God, I want more of you in my life. I'm going to invite you to actually stand with me as we pray. And we're going to pray and we're going to just recognize before God and before, you know, the Holy Spirit that, that God, I want more of you. This isn't so other people can see you. This isn't so that we can look around and go, oh, they don't want more of God. Interesting. Um, but this is a moment for us and the Lord to be able to say, God, I'm going to do this to, to recognize that I want more of you in my life. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just begin to pray. And I'm not, we're not going to do a moment where I'm going to say, let's all stand. Um, but what we're going to do is as I begin to pray, if that's you, I, I would invite you just to, to begin to stand. And I know it's going to be intimidating because somebody's got to be first. And that's scary and all of those things. But I'm going to just begin to pray. And if that's you, would you respond to the Holy Spirit this morning? Father God, I thank you for today. I thank you that today is the day where we receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. That today is the day that you said that wait for what's coming. And you said it would be to, to our advantage that you would go and that the Holy Spirit would come. And so God, I thank you that in our lives today, we have the advantage, the blessing of the Holy Spirit working in us and through us. And God, I just want to pray now as we remember the first coming of the Holy Spirit. God, in this moment, in this time, in this place, would your Holy Spirit come and work in us. God, we don't need something new from you. God, we need to be opened up to you. And so, God, I pray for each one gathered here, each one who, who would recognize, I need more of the Holy Spirit at work in my life. God, in the name of, of Jesus, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Holy Spirit, we just pray for wide openings in our lives. We just pray for, for wide avenues for the Holy Spirit to come and work in us. We just pray in the name of Jesus, may the Holy Spirit find good ground that we don't even know exists in our lives. God, would you come and work in us? Would you change us? Would you make us? Would you mold us more and more into the people you've called us to be? God, our heart's cry is more of you and less of us. And so in the name of Jesus, God, we pray that we would decrease that you might increase. And Holy Spirit, we just invite you to come and work in us and through us. Tear down the strongholds. Tear down the places of resistance. Tear down the places where the enemy has found good ground. And God, would you replace that with your good ground? And that you would come and work in our lives in a new and an exciting way. That we would be transformed from this day forward. That we would look back on this Pentecost Sunday. And we would look back and go, what a turning point in our lives, in our church, in our community, in our city, in our province, and in our nation. Because the Holy Spirit is at work in his people. God, we need you. We need more of you. And so, God, in the name of Jesus, would you just pour your Holy Spirit out on us in this place? God, fill us up with your Holy Spirit. God, we long for more of you in our lives. Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. And we need, we want, we cry out, God, more of you in our lives. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Amen. Well, you can find, find your seats this morning. So just to keep it all very confusing, next we're going to go to release the kids to go upstairs. But before we release the kids, before the kids go, just wait one sec, just wait one sec. I got to do one thing before you go. Actually, two things before you go. First, we want to, you know, we, we, I've talked before about how it's tricky for us to recognize birthdays because there's so many people and people's birthdays will come and go without us even realizing it. And then when we recognize someone, somebody, well, they didn't say anything about mine. And, and so it can be very difficult and tricky to do that. But there are a couple of birthdays we need to recognize today because they're significant birthdays. And at least I'm aware of them. And if it's your birthday too, happy birthday. Just know that I'm not aware of it, but make me aware of it. So next year I'll be able to remember. But we want to recognize Pastor Matt. It's his 35th birthday today. Today. So he celebrated his 35th birthday with 30 kids here at Youth on Friday, staying up all night and all kinds of stuff. They had a great time. So thank you, Pastor Matt. And we like to take time to recognize, you know, when, when a birthday ends in a zero, it's a significant thing. Like, you know, th those are like the year markers for whatever reason. And so today is David Musendika's birthday. He's turning 10 today. So happy birthday, David. And nah, oh, the other thing, the other thing. I, one thing I've, I've not done very well on is... is uh, reinforcing what needs to take place around kids ministry. I kind of just release all the kids to go and assume you all know everything. Um, and, and, but we, you don't, because I've never bothered to tell you very often. Um, but, so when we release the kids to go to kids ministry, they'll head upstairs and do their thing. At the end of the service, when, when we say, it's time, you know, go pick up your kids, or we might not say anything. What we do need is for the parents to go upstairs to get their kids out, so that our, our kids ministry workers aren't just sort of letting them run out of the hallway and see what happens. Um, hopefully they make it home. Um, but so, if, if, if at, at the conclusion of our service, if you can make your way upstairs to, to just check your kids out, to just let them know, hey, I'm here to get my kids, these are my kids, and then at least our Sunday school teachers will have the confidence and assurance that knowing you've taken them, and then whatever happens to them from there, that's on you. Our Sunday school teachers are, are finished. And so now, kids, you are released to head upstairs this morning. And now, Carmen, just to keep it more complicated, back to the beginning where we were going to do announcements. We've got a couple of things that I want to share with you, um, just that are going on in the life of our church as the kids are heading upstairs. Uh, one of the things that, that we've been invited to be a part of as a church through the, the Airdrie Ministerial Association is prayer walks. And, and we've, we've chosen to sort of commit our energy and our time towards Kings Heights and Ravenswood and Lanark, the, the areas where our church is. We, we know and recognize that, that not everybody, not even the majority of people in our church live in those areas, but because you're here, what we know is true is that you go to church in those areas because you're here and that's where our church is. But so what I want to invite you to do is on June 10th, we're going to have what we're going to call Prayer Walk Saturday. And so um, we're going to meet here at the church at 9.30 in the morning. I know that's early, but hey, it's never too early for Jesus. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to meet here at 9.30 in the morning, and we're going to go just do a, a prayer walk through kind of those areas. However many people come, we'll disperse, go in groups, go individually for about an hour, and we'll have a guide. So, you know, sometimes it can be intimidating to be like, well, what does even prayer walking mean? Do I walk and go, God bless that house, God bless that house, God bless that house, God, and I got to do that for an hour? Um, but, you know, but we'll have a guide that will help you have prayer focuses and different things you can pray for throughout the community, but we're going to be together for about an hour that morning, but if you can't come at 9.30 that morning and you say, I would love to do that, I just can't do it then, it's Prayer Walk Saturday. So you can come later. You can come and go at a different time. Don't meet here at the church if you're not coming at 9.30. Um, if you come at 3 in the afternoon, don't come to the church. Just go to 
Kings Heights or Ravenswood or Lanark, just go somewhere and start praying. Because if you come here, I, I can't be here all day um, to, just in case somebody shows up. But we're going to meet at 930, but you're welcome to come later on in the day and just prayer walk through these neighborhoods as we want to pray the blessings of, of God over them, pray the, pray the Holy Spirit be at work in them, and pray for salvations from them. That, that this is our, our fields that are ripe unto harvest, is, is we want to, to make an impact into our communities. And the biggest impact, the biggest way that we can forge ahead in making an impact is to pray together for our communities. So that is Saturday, June 10th, 930 here at the church. I um, also want to let you know at the end of the month, and this would have been a good announcement for the kids, but parents can be aware. At the end of the month, on the last Sunday, we're having what we call Up Day 2023. And what that is, is it's the day when all of the kids who graduate out of kids' ministry and into youth, we take a moment to recognize them and to celebrate them and to pray for them as they transition from kids' ministry to youth ministry. And so that's June 25th, the last Sunday of June. We'll, we'll take some time in our service to do that. Also want to let you know, one of the things we like to do if you're newer to our church over the summer is what we have, we call our Hillside Summer Connects. And they're just some things that we do throughout the summer to bring the family together. Is, is we know people are busy, people are gone, people are on holidays, people are camping, people are all over. I, you notice I, I differentiate between holidays and camping. Um, those are not always the same thing. Um, but, uh, but we would like to have these times and these moments where, where we have a chance for, for the church to come together. They're fairly unstructured. Um, it's, it's not, oh, we're going to do uh, like this big program. It's more we're finding just times and places to be together. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to be coming out with more and more information about what we're going to be doing this summer, um, but the things like a hike or, or on June 25th, the Sunday, uh, same Sunday's update, following our service, we're going to have a church picnic. And so we're going to head over following our service. You're welcome to bring a lunch if you like, or you're welcome to buy some lunch. Last year when we did this, we did it at Nose Creek Park, and it turned out that there was some festival thing going on, so there's a whole bunch of food trucks and stuff, so they brought us lunch. Um, but I don't know if that's happening again. I can look that up. But we're going to go, uh, following our service, we're going to go to Nose Creek Park, and we're just going to spend the afternoon together. There's no formal program. There's not activities uh, that we're planning. If you want to bring some activities, you're welcome to. But it's just an opportunity for the church just to be together and just to live life and, and kick off our summer together. And we're going to have more information about all of those things over... Uh, oh, all, more information about the other things that we're doing over the summer coming out in the next little while. If you're new to our church this morning or if you'd ever like to communicate with the church, you can always send a text message to 403-948-0388 and we can communicate that way. You can sign up with our newsletter at hillsideairdry.ca. Every page you can sign up and every Tuesday you'll get an email with everything going on in the life of our church. And if you'd like to worship the Lord through tithes and offerings, you can do so at the back. You can scan the QR code that's behind me or on your screen or hillsideairdry.ca slash give is all of our giving options. Now, Carmen, the next jump is jump all the way to the sermon because I don't remember what's in between here and the sermon. Sorry? We're good? All right, there we go. This week, we're going to be in Psalm 139 again. So if you'd like to uh, follow along in Scripture, you can turn to Psalm 139. Um, last week, we began what's sort of like a mini-series inside of a larger series. We, we've been talking about these dangerous prayers that we find in Scripture, these, these prayers that somebody prayed or, or something that someone said inside of Scripture that if, if we pray them in our own lives, it opens us up to a, a way in a way to the Lord, to, to God, working in us and through us that, that could be considered exciting or could be considered dangerous. Because God's, if God answers the prayer, we're, we're really inviting God to come and do some things in us and through us. And last week, we, we began to talk about what I would consider maybe the most dangerous prayer that we could pray. A prayer that God would come into our lives and, and do the deepest work possible by putting everything up on the table. By, by putting everything in front of God. Even the things that we don't even know are there in front of God. And saying to God, God, come and search me and try me. God, come and look at the deepest, darkest recesses of my heart and let me know what's there. 
Because sometimes we don't know ourselves as well as we think we know ourselves. That, that there can be parts where, where we feel pretty confident, pretty comfortable. Things are pretty good here. But it takes God to come along and say, actually, things aren't the way that you think that they are. Last week, we, we spent our time opening ourselves up to the possibility that, that God may need to point some things out to us that, that maybe we don't even know about and how we need him to do that because our, our self-awareness, our self-perception, our, our ability to evaluate our, our own hearts is flawed. That, that I, we can say, I know in my heart, but scripture will say that our heart is deceitful above all things. And so there's a conflict between those. And so sometimes we need God to come and show us the things that, that we believe in our hearts to be true that maybe aren't as true as we'd like them to be. And this week we're going to continue to work along in this prayer and, and see how David opens himself up to God and, and what that looked like for him and, and what this could look like for us. And so we go back to Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24, where David prays, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me. And, and this is, that's what we really talked about last week, was God, search me and test me. And then he goes on to say, And know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Know my anxious thoughts. That, that's what we're going to be talking about this morning. And, and it's appropriate. We, we sang songs this morning about speaking the name of Jesus over all of our fears. We, we sang about, in the, the last song, Unbound Hope, God, God that we would, we would know you in the face of our fear. And anxious thoughts, the thoughts that, that make our blood pressure rise, that, that make our heart beat faster, or our hands get a little clammy, these are what we're going to talk about this morning. Now, now to be clear, we're, we're not talking about like external fears like, like snakes and spiders or, or the fear of flying or that we're not going to just show scary images up on the screen to desensitize everybody to stuff that's going It's not those kinds of fears. I have to remind myself quite frequently that people don't like to do this. Um, I have no fear of public speaking. Um, and so it kind of comes with the territory. You have to kind of get over it if you have it. But I often forget that, that people don't like to do this. It was on, I think it was on Seinfeld where they talked about how, how the number one fear that people have is public speaking. And, and number two is death. And so people would rather be in the casket than doing, doing the eulogy. That, that, you know, given the choice, <laughs> I'd, I'd, it's more fearful to, to do the public speaking. But, but we're not going to talk about those kinds of things. And for David, that's not what he's talking about either. It wasn't just, just God, show me the kinds of things from, from out there that I'm afraid of. God, God, give me visions of bears. Give me visions of snakes. Give me vision. That, that's, not, that's not what he's asking for. I, I don't know how familiar David would have been with great white sharks. But I'm guessing that if God showed him a great, he might be a little angry. That, that's a scary thing. But that, that's not what David's asking for. What we're talking about is not external fears. We're going to talk about internal fears. The, the fears that resonate inside of us. The things that keep you up at night. The, the things that bounce around inside your head. And no matter how much you try to, to distract yourself and to think about something else, the, the fears just keep bouncing around inside there and it, it, it can be hard to, to just let them go. Things like losing your job. Things like maybe never getting married or, or being stuck in, in a bad marriage. Things like having your health fail. Things like using all of the money you have to just pay the outstanding bills and, and having no ability to pay the, the current bills. Things like huge potential life changes or, or just change in general. Last night we, were at, we had a, a men's dinner here at the church and it was a great time. I was talking with, with some guys after and, and one of the guys said, 
I just love change. I just love change. And I said to them, well, I didn't say to them. I thought, are you insane? <laughs> Who loves change? You know, if you want to tell the story of my life in a certain way, this, about a year ago, um, we, my wife and I, we bought my parents' house. And so if you look at my life 20 years ago to 20 years now, or 20 years later, the biggest change in, in my life is that I've moved 10 feet down the hall. <laughs> that, like, uh, change is terrifying. But those kinds of things, they bounce around inside of our head. And, and last week we talked about how the, David wrote this prayer at a time in his life when he was on the run for his life from the king, from King Saul. And not just from the king, but from the entire king's army. He's hiding in caves and, and living every day knowing that if he's found, today could be his last day on earth. That, that he has to live each day with the knowledge that if King Saul and his army finds me, that could be it for me. So what could David possibly be worried about? What, what could be keeping him up at night? What, what could be weighing on his heart and mind? I think it's, it's pretty obvious. The king and his soldiers on a mission to kill him. You know, that, that would weigh heavily on us. And, and that's the thing about the things that make us anxious. The things that can make us fearful and worried. The things that can weigh heavy on our hearts and our souls. They all make sense. I, at least to us. So, sometimes when we tell other people what makes us worried, that they can't always understand it. That if we, sometimes we go to friends and we say, you know, I'm just feeling really stressed about, and they look at us kind of funny and go, really? Really? That, you're, that keeps you up at night? Oh, that, that doesn't worry me at all. You, you don't need to worry about that. That's silly. But in our minds, our fears are justified. The, the thoughts and the stress that can fill our hearts, it makes sense to us. It resonates with something inside of us for a very real reason. And, and it just becomes a very real weight for us to carry, even if it makes sense to no one else. It makes sense in our heart. And it becomes a weight that we have, or a weight that we carry, it, and it becomes deeply personal when we begin to worry about it, even if for nobody else it makes any kind of sense. What shakes me may be something so small for you that you would go, oh, Brad, don't be silly. But the inverse of that may be true too, that you may say, oh, well, but this is something really to be worried about. And it's, oh, that doesn't rattle me at all. But here's the truth. What we fear matters. See, fear is born out of uncertainty. We don't know what's going to happen. And, and what if what happens is the worst? The, the worst of the worst. And, and our human brains are very good at going there. That, that when we go... <laughs> into anything, we can so easily slip into, but what if? And it's usually never, but what if something really good happens? It's usually, but what if this happens? What if I say this and everybody looks at me like I'm an idiot? What if I do this and I fail and I fall flat on my face? What if I step out and it was the worst decision I've ever made in my life? Sometimes that uncertainty comes from circumstances. Your boss has a staff meeting at work and says, just so you know, next week we're laying off some people. We don't know who yet, but just so you're aware. And suddenly we're filled with uncertainty. 
I'm someone. That could be me. What if, what if I don't have a job next week? What, what, if, what if I don't have work? What are we going to, how am I going to feed my family? How am I going to have money to give? How am I going to, what if? Sometimes that certainty comes from information. A, a diagnosis from your doctor puts a lot of doubt into what your future holds. We, we've, we need to run some more tests. Or, or we've ran some tests. And, and can you sit down for a minute? We, we have to talk. And a diagnosis comes, and suddenly, what if, what if, what if? And we, we can become fearful of what the future holds. So sometimes that uncertainty comes from past experiences. Other did, others did it, and I saw what happened to them. And if I have to go do that, what if what happened to them happens to me? Or, or maybe these other people treated me like that, what if, what if these other these new people do the same thing? They were mean to me. What, what if they're mean to me? And sometimes the uncertainty that comes from just the thoughts in our minds, just simply the what if start to pile up. And we don't know why. But they're there. And they become very, very real. But the places where, where fear lands the hardest, the, the places where the weight is the heaviest, they actually teach us something about ourselves. That they show us something about our relationship with God. Let, let me submit this to you this morning. The things that give us the greatest fears in our hearts they show us where our trust in God is the lowest. Where our ability to really trust God is its weakest. What you fear the most shows you where you need to grow with God. If you're gripped with fear about your marriage about ever getting married, if you're gripped with fear about your relationships, is this an indication that maybe you don't trust God with your marriage? If you're overwhelmed with, how am I going to pay my bills? D does this reveal that, that we can struggle with trusting God to really be our provider? If we're paralyzed with worry about safety of, of ourselves or of our children, could it be that we're just, we're, we're not trusting God to keep them safe? That when our heart is gripped with fear, can it be that these are areas that we're not willing to trust God in? Now, all of these worries are justifiable. I'm not saying we shouldn't think, hey, if you trust God, let your kids play in the traffic. Who cares? God will keep them safe. That, that's, that's not what we're... But when the fear becomes a weight on our lives, when, when we become unable to operate, because what if something happens? It's not an abandonment of common sense. It's not an abandonment of human wisdom and insight, but it's an understanding that in areas of our lives, there are places where the weight of worry and fear can crush us. And that's not who we're called to be. It's not that we're not called to be conscious of things going on in our world and to take precaution and to care and to, to want to have things be the best they can but we're also not called to get chewed up by that. The areas of our life where we have the most uncertainty means that we need to be asking God to work in that area of our life, to, to help us to be able to trust him more with whatever that thing may be. And the reason why I, I think that, that we can see from Scripture that, that this is a true sentiment, that, that fear and God are juxtaposed, is because that's what happens all throughout Scripture. 
that all throughout Scripture we can read in, in verse after verse, in book after book, that we have a choice between fear and God. In the, Bible, in, in the Psalms specifically, we can find so many places and references to fear and trusting God. Psalm 27, 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? That we've got a choice. I, I've got God and, and I've got fear. And, and I need to choose which one I want. If, if, I, if God is my salvation, then what do I need to be afraid of? But if I'm afraid of everything, then is God my salvation? But when we have God on our side, we don't need to be afraid with Christ in our lives. We know that there's a hope for the future. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 tells us that fear isn't our natural state. It will say, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. That whenever we're walking through life and we're afraid and we're fearful, and we, well, did that come from God? No. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but instead of power and of love and of a sound mind. And that's where we come back to. God has given you a sound mind, so you don't let your kids not play in traffic because, well, I'm, uh, you know, I'm fearful. No, you don't let your kids play in traffic because God's given you a sound mind. But we have not been given a spirit of fear. We all have fears that invade our thoughts, whether, whether they be fears for the future, financial trouble, health concerns, failure or pain. And we can, we can find it difficult to practice letting go of these fears. However, with Jesus, we don't have to let the feelings of fear control our lives. When we realize the value of letting go of our fears and, and giving them to Christ, this is where we can find genuine peace. And sometimes we have to remind ourselves of this. There are some times in our lives where, where we have to preach to ourselves where as we are walking through life and we are becoming overwhelmed by fear and we are becoming overwhelmed by our circumstances and we are becoming overwhelmed, we have to begin to preach the gospel to ourselves. We have to sing old songs. Maybe we have to sing children's songs. We have to sing, he's got the whole world in his hands. Because we have to remind ourselves of the things that we know to be true. And the things that we know are true despite what's going on in our lives. A couple of years ago, um, I went through a really difficult season of life with kind of fear and anxiety and worry. And it was just a big part of, of who I was. And, and I remember when I was younger, people always used to tell me, Brad, you never seem worried. You, you, never, seem, you never seem fearful. You, you never seem stressed out or, or concerned or, or worried. And I'd always tell them, it's because I worry at 4 a.m. But there was a season where every night when we would go to bed, my wife, Yvonne, would make up a bed for me in the living room. Because she knew every single night I was going to be getting up in the middle of the night and being unable to sleep. And so she just said, like, why are we pretending like you're not going to do that tonight? Let me at least make you comfortable. And so every night before bed, she would make up a little bed for me on the couch so that when I woke up at 4 a.m., I could go lay on a nice comfortable bed in the couch instead of having in the dark to try and find something, a pillow and a blanket and all of these kinds of things. But in those moments, we have to recognize that God hasn't given us that spirit of fear. And it may feel very real and it may feel impactful, but that's when we need to remind ourselves he's got the whole world in his hands. 
His holds my life in the palm of his hands. We don't rely on our own strength, but God's power. And we can find that our anxieties and our stresses, we can win the victory against them. We read that this morning in 1 John, that we have victory over the enemy. In the Bible, we read the story of a man named Abram, who was put in a place between choosing God and fear. In in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, we read this, and I've got it posted in the New King James Version because I really like sort of the urgency that it's with. But now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country. That's that's pretty strong. Hi, I've got something for you to do. Can can we can we get together and chat? I've got some ideas about your future and what you might want to think. Get out of your country. From your family from your father's house to a land I will show you. How would you feel if God said to you, get out of your house, get away from everyone you know and love, move to the other, to somewhere, I'll eventually show you where you're going. I'm going to wager there's some anxious thoughts involved in all of that. And we have some in our church who've done that, that have moved away from everybody they know and and moved and maybe had no idea Airdrie was where they were going to end up and here they are. And I'm guessing that if we were to ask everyone who's taken that journey, did you ever feel anxious? Did you ever have moments where what are we doing? This is, how can we do this? We don't know what is going to happen to us. This is precisely what Abram faced. This idea of pack up and go and just go. But what does God tell Abram? What does God, what does God, what advice does God give him? The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not... Be afraid, Abram. Fear not. I believe that the words fear not, for us, they simply mean don't run. So the solution to fear is simple. Rather than, than bowing our knee and, and giving in to fear, we, 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 we just need to not run. We, we stand against it knowing that God has gone before us and, and prepared the way and that this is precisely what God wants us to do. Even if our knees are shaking. Even if in order to stand, we got to lean on something because we're not quite sure we can do it. Even when our mouth is dry and, and our heart is beating a thousand beats a minute because we're terrified. Fear not doesn't mean that nothing has an effect on you. But in order to to fear not, in order to not be afraid, is to just simply stand and trust God, even if it means closing your eyes, gritting your teeth, and just, I'm going to trust you in the face of all of this. It doesn't mean, who cares? No problem. I got this. This is easy. It means, God, I trust you. Oh, I trust you. I trust you. God gave Abram a tall order to to go and pack up everything and everyone you know and everything you're comfortable with and go somewhere else. If Abram had bowed his knee to fear, if he would have heard God say that and said, Get up, are you crazy? I can't do, I've got a family, I've got people that count on me, I've got a life here. I can't just pack up and go. You're going to have to find somebody else. If if, if Abram had, had done that, he would have never fulfilled his destiny to become all God created him to be, the father of many nations. And so we need to ask God to strengthen us. We need to determine that our lives are not going to be ruled by fear, but by the word of God. 
We talked about how we don't know exactly the fears that were going through David's mind when he wrote these words. But, it, but it's clear that he was troubled about his safety and, and probably about his future because after asking God to search his heart, Dave, after asking God, would you search my heart? David prays, David prays, know my anxious thoughts. He, he wanted to share his worst fears with God. God, God, I want you to know. I want you to search me. And God, I, I want you to know the places where I'm afraid. He wanted to face them with God and to give them a name and to trust that God was bigger than any fear David could dream up. So what about us? What are the areas in our lives that for some weird reason we cling to? even though they terrify us, even though they make us uncomfortable, even though they rob us of sleep, even though they demonstrably make our lives worse, but we cling to them and we hold on to them. What fears are, are we stubbornly refusing to hand over to God? Where, where do we need to grow in our faith? Where do we need to grow in trusting him? Are you willing to pray such a prayer? Lord, reveal what's holding my mind hostage. Show me what it is I fear the most. Go ahead, help me face what terrifies me. Friends, if you're struggling with anxious thoughts today, you're in good company. We all are. And when David prayed this prayer, it wasn't some sort of false humility where God, show me my anxious thoughts because I know there aren't any. You know, it's, it, our son Theo, he struggles with keeping his room clean. Struggles mightily with keeping his room clean. He will be, Dad, I cleaned my room. And I, no, you didn't. <laughs> well, I don't know what. But when, when he has cleaned his room, he'll, he'll have, Dad, you should come see my room. Dad, come and see my room. So then I can go and see his room. And I, Theo, well done. There's not rotting food in here. Way to go, buddy. <laughs> this wasn't like that for David where he's, God, come and, come and look for my anxious thoughts because I don't think you'll find any. And so then you'll be able to tell me, good job. Is he saying, God, come and, and show me everywhere where I'm worried, where I'm fearful, where, where I am feeling like I am uncertain about my life and my future because that's where I need you to come and, and fix me, to heal me, to make me whole so that I don't have to be afraid when I know you're in control. You're in good company. David was afraid. When fearful thoughts come to mind, we, we can stop the worry cycle by, by centering our thoughts on God's faithfulness instead. F feed your mind with the, with the truth of Scripture. Look, look for a promise in God's word that, that you can pray. Take a moment and identify your fears and concerns. S speak them to God. Don't just, well, God, you know that thing, right? But God, you know I'm afraid for provision. God, you know I'm afraid of this situation. Speak the thing to God. Name them one by one before your heavenly father, asking him to help you trust him. Surrender your, your concerns to the God who loves you and cares for your needs. Don't allow fear to stop you from coming to God in prayer. And as you pray, he, he will bring greater peace to your heart. Um, I don't know if we can do this. I didn't ask anybody, but I'm, I think probably everybody's still here. Um, I'm wondering if we could close with a song. 
Um, we don't always do that. I don't know if everybody's still here or if there's enough of our worship. I think, I mean, I don't think our worship team would have left, but maybe they're in the bathroom or something. Um, but they got to go get their guitars and picks and in-ears back in. But I, just as I'm, pray, as, as I'm preaching this, I'm thinking, we, we, should, we need to close with that I speak the name of Jesus song. Um, that we're going to speak the name of Jesus over our fears, o- over our worries, that scripture will tell us that every knee will bow to the name of Jesus, and that includes our, our fears, our anxious thoughts, and our worries. And friends, the most profound thing that we can do when we're afraid, the most profound thing that we can do when we're worried, the most profound thing that we can do in our lives when we are faced with uncertainty is to speak the name of Jesus over them. Is to pray, Jesus, in my circumstance, you control this. This is yours. And so I'm going to invite you as as I'm trying to give them enough time to to get all set up and do things on the fly. But if if you would like to stand and even just begin to pray, Uh, Begin to pray for your life. Begin to pray for your circumstances. Begin to pray for areas in your life where you know you need God to work in your heart and in your life. And as the worship team is ready, they'll lead us when, when they've got all their stuff together. But I would just invite you to just begin to pray just where you are, out loud, in your head, whatever that looks like for you. And just begin to, to pray for your life and for your circumstance.
shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus, Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Your every stronghold shine. Jesus over my family. Friends, you're my family. So I speak the name of Jesus over your lives, over every concern, over every worry, over every fear, over every place in your life that God has shown you that it's not the way that it should be. We don't receive guilt. We don't receive shame. We receive the power of the Holy Spirit, the name of Jesus at work in our lives. Friends, I speak the name of Jesus over you. So we're going to close our service off like this, and I pray that this ministers to you, that this isn't just ritual, but this is meaningful for you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you in the darkness, may his face shine upon your life. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you. We love you. We believe in you. And we speak the name of Jesus over your lives. Have a wonderful week. We hope to see you again really soon.